get a little age. I don't know. I ain't think so much about legacy when I was. <laughs> Leg legacy didn't, wasn't really in my vocabulary when I was 20. You find this way in my vocabulary a whole lot now. <laughs> a little bit older. <laughs> And so I love the model here. Yeah. Since so she died, and when they washed her, they laid her in an upper chamber. The text tells me. And they and they went forth, which was close to, to Lila, which was close to Joppa. The disciples heard that Peter and the King James was there. They sent him under their two men, desiring him that he would not delay to come unto them. Here you have Peter who has walked with Jesus, heard the preaching. Spent all the years of being an uh, the apostle to him, but Peter, who knows something about, uh, knows something about falling short. He, he knows something about uh, shooting out your mouth before you get your, your brain in the you know. And feeling the loving correctiveness of an eternal, gracious Savior. A man who would deny Christ, and yet, Christ would use him mightily. Yeah, yeah. And they call Peter and ask him to come to this site, this setting, where she now has passed, and they've laid him up in an upper room. The text goes on to say this, 39. So Peter immediately rose and accompanied them. And when he had arrived, they took him to the upper room. All the widows stood around him crying and displaying the, the tunics and other garments, which is which Dorcas had accustomed to make while she was with them. And they so loved her that they wanted to demonstrate, they wanted, they wanted to show their love and their modeling and show them what she had done for them. But Peter put them all out of the room and knelt down and prayed. Then turning to the body, he said, Tabitha, get up. She opened her eyes, and when she saw Peter, she raised herself and sat upright. And he gave her his hand and lifted her up. And then calling in, God, calling in God's people and the widows, he presented her to them alive. Second life lesson if you jot it is this. God's supernatural response to our overwhelming needs can enlarge our hearts and minds for Jesus. Receive graciously. God's supernatural response to our overwhelming needs can enlarge our hearts and minds for Christ Jesus. Receive graciously. Peter, does, Peter, Peter doesn't hesitate. He, he, he moves immediately, the text tells me. What is it that's happening that has transformed, transformed this apostle here now? That he now recognizes that that the problem, not only that the, the God of the promises is, is faithful to the promise, but the promises of God are faithful to be fulfilled even through him, an imperfect vessel. And he now runs towards the opportunity uh, for this stranger uh, nearby in a nearby town to see what God would do when he gets there. See how God would possibly utilize him in the midst of a scenario, in this, this situation. That from all the human perspective uh, seems to be concluded. I mean, she's passed. The situation is over. Uh, but, but Peter, but Peter has to remember at least two episodes that give him a different perspective on this. Mm -hmm. He has, first of all, he has to be thinking. Now, wait a minute. Christ Jesus rose from the dead. Right. He told us that he would give his life for us, and on the third day he would rise again. And he rose from the dead and has appeared before us. And, and I remember the conversation Peter would say that I had with him as he said, do you love me, Peter, three times? Mm -hmm. Then you need to feed my lambs and feed my sheep. And secondly, he would have to think, perhaps, looking back even a little bit further, I do remember when Jesus called Lazarus out of the tomb. Yeah, right. So the same Jesus that has the command of life and death and the ability to, rest, to raise up from the dead demonstrated his ability on mere humans like us. Amen. Uh, as he called Lazarus from the tomb. And he told us, Peter might think, that we might do even greater things oh, that's than it now. talk to me about him now than, than you witnessed down here as he was walking. So, so if Jesus is true to his word and he's already proved himself a few times, 
yeah. and this thing that, that I need to be bold enough, yeah. I need to be uh, uh, unashamed enough, if you will, uh -huh. I need to just be uh, gracious and loving enough that if the Lord puts an opportunity in front of me yeah. to be a blessing on in the name of Jesus, yeah. then he has a work he wants to fulfill That's in and through me. And God just didn't send the men across his path as coincidence. Uh, they looked him up. They knew he was nearby. Uh, wait, wait, wait. In somebody's journey, has the Lord ever sent anybody across your path? With, a, with an opportunity that you didn't think you'd ever have to make a difference in somebody's life you never knew. That's right. Yes. That's right. Question on the table is do you trust the Lord enough that if he opens the door for you, that you're willing to walk through? Because the tendency in our humanity is that when there is an unknown door opened in front of us, can I talk to y'all like you family? Amen. When, 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 when we don't know what's on the other side of the door, the tendency is for us to shrink away. You know, we tend to get risk averse. You know, we, we, we don't want to take the step towards the unknown. Thinking a couple of things. Number one, I don't want to. I don't want to put myself in an insecure situation. <laughs> Secondly, thinking, well, you know, I'm, I may not be up to the task, mm -hmm. and so there's a fear of failure. Mm -hmm. But when the Lord opens, yes. yes, and the opportunity is to be a blessing, and clearly. Is for him. Mm -hmm. well, they are for him. I mean, this is a little more clearly for him. You know, there, there is no gain to be received on your part for being the blessing. Then we need to be at least, at least mature enough in our faith, I would pray, that, that we would step through the door, the one step of faith, sister, trusting that the Lord will undergird that step if I take it. You're, you're opening up the door, you're pointing me in that direction, then I ought to at least trust you enough, Lord, to take the step inside the door and just see what you got. Even if you don't tell me what's inside, so to see what's inside, can I talk to somebody? I ought to at least have enough, enough faith inside. Oh, Lord, give me enough faith. Help my unbelief enough to be able to at least take that one step of faith and say, okay, Lord, you sent them to me. Uh, you said this is an opportunity. Now, I know that inside of me is not the ability to handle the opportunity. But if it was based on my ability to handle the opportunity, then I would have no business there in the first place. So if, if you're sending me there, then clearly a couple things have happened. You have prepared me for this moment. Yes. You have prepared the environment that you're sending me there to go to for me to come to the environment. Am I saying this right? And now must be the perfect time in your divine timetable to bring these two things together. The person you want to the environment that you want to bring them to to be the blessing that you want to achieve. There. And so with that in Peter's mind, Peter doesn't sit there analyzing the question. He doesn't sit there debating to himself or with the others that come and say, now wait a minute, you're telling me that he's dead, what do you need me for? He arises immediately, the text tells me, and he goes to where Tabitha is, to where Dorcas is, to where they have led him to, and there he finds, the text says, there he finds uh, the widows and, 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 and the disciples around, the widows are crying and said and displaying their tunics and other garments that Dorcas had a customer make while she was with them. Basically demonstrated their love and affection for this woman who had blessed in their lives so many times. They don't know what to do. They can't give back. All they can do is display their affection for the legacy that had been left on their heart from a woman who loved them so, so sacrificially, so unselfish. And Peter does a couple of interesting things. <laughs> the first thing he does is he puts everybody out. <laughs> Am I in the text? If you came for a healing 